standalone BCS championship game here in Pasadena. The beautiful setting, beautiful weather overhead, and two teams that roll in here. Vince Young, the guy that got Carroll on the Trojans Come here four now. years ago. Oh, Sorry, it's a bad memory. How he was on the sidelines along with that thing. Ricky <laughs> Williams and so many other greats. <laughs> this time, Texas again, the underdog, and this is the, the inexplicable Corey Reamer checks to a fake punt. T.J. Fitzgerald intercepted by Blake Gideon, the first series of the game. Pete, what's going on? No, I just saw, finally got a good look at it. This was a disguise that Texas had. They had uh, 10 guys up, and they pulled out of it, and, and you get a great play, great disguise. They threw it uncovered uh, to the gunner, and, and they, they covered it. That's a great play. I didn't realize that's how it happened. But the fourth snap for Texas, McCoy, a design run, a big Marcel Darius hits him right there on the right shoulder. McCoy knows right away that he's hurt, Kurt. Yeah, I, I think it, initially he thought he might be able to shake it off. He sits on top of the pile, tries to, to maybe think he's ready for the next play, and then he has to, to shake it off. And at that point, Texas calls a timeout to try to regroup. And in comes Garrett Gilbert from Austin, a true freshman. He was the National High School Player of the Year last year, set a Texas state record, a big talent, but they wanted to see him in September of 2010, not January of 2010. He just had mop-up duty this year. No way he could be ready for this. No, I, I don't think there's a true freshman quarterback in the country that would be ready to come into this atmosphere against this kind of defense to game was moving way too fast for him here early. They try to go play action, try to catch Alabama off guard. The defense is there, and eventually they end up settling for the field goal. That's the big win, Pete, as McCoy goes off to have that shoulder check. But then the onside kick, and this was a wrinkle. Alabama not ready for the short kickoff. Yeah, I think after the first one, you know, they they, they fielded the ball all right. I bet they told uh, uh, Julio to go ahead and let's field that second one, and the ball hit in between the two guys. Couldn't get to look. The ball's on the 32-yard line. That's too far up the, up the field. That was a mistake by them. And it's another opportunity here for Texas talking about the mayhem of the yeah, early part of the football game. It was crazy game. right in here, and boy, Texas had a chance. They couldn't seize the opportunity. Now they couldn't. A third and five. Dan Buckner had an opportunity. Could not come up with the pass from Gilbert. Texas receivers really struggled in the first half. Yeah, yeah. Dan Buckner and Malcolm Williams both just really struggling, I think, to have the confidence to be able to secure the football and make the catch. So it's only 6 nothing. Bama down, and then the Heisman Trophy whatever. Go to work some physical runs here. Yeah, this is a nice football right here. They're banging it up in there. Really taking it to a defense that you wouldn't think this would happen to. And that's the thing we wanted to see. How would Ingram, the Heisman winner, do against the number one rushing defense in the country? And we, we learned a lot I in the first half. I think he was half. lights out. Yes. Look at Cody. He, the big guy flinched. They didn't get the false start. Yeah, he, yeah. The umpire, yeah, umpire could have got that. The referee could have got that. He didn't get it. They got away with it and banged it in the end zone. Jumbo formation as Ingram just waltzes in the end zone. Bama takes a 7-6 lead. Ensuing Texas drive, third and 15. Courtney Upshaw hits Gilbert as he throws the ball. This is almost another injury to a quarterback. Yeah, Sherrod Harris all of a sudden starts to warm up the third string quarterback. You know you're in trouble, but fortunately he was able to shake this off and come back for a pretty uh, heroic second half. You know, I think it was they had trouble here finding their, their rhythm and what they wanted to do with Gilbert, and he was struggling. There was three straight drop back passes. He got hammered. They couldn't get anything going. And meanwhile, Richardson. Breaks up the middle. The freshman untouched, 48 yards for a touchdown. Great speed. Yeah, he's, he's got to be fast now. Well, he's fast, and Texas slanted, and it actually created the crease within the defense. Good job by Johnson, a left guard with a dominating block. They open up a crease for Richardson. He's going to take it all the way. So it's 14-6, but Texas has a chance to get back in the game on the ensuing drive, and Malcolm Williams in the end zone can't come up with this pass. Yeah, that's a catchable ball, I would think. I think any receiver would say, I got a shot at this one. Now, the DB man knocked it out, but I think he missed it before the contact. And you got to be stronger with your hands. At 6-3, you have an advantage. you got to go up and help the true freshman yeah, he needs, out. He needs that catch yeah. right there. Oh, the Texas coaches couldn't believe it, and it was so costly because next play, Javier Arenas oh. jumps the slant route, the interception by the freshman. Yeah, that's that's ill-advised. There's three guys around the football. He just didn't look and took through right into the coverage. And like any young quarterback, when you throw to the middle in the heart of a defense, there's just too many colors, too much movement for yeah. a young quarterback. You can see to... him. He was really struggling in the yep. drop-back game. And... Disaster right here. The shovel pass is picked up. Oh, that part so Darius. Darius. Look at the big guy, the spin move. <laughs> what Made a pass to the end zone. That's a Hall of Fame highlight <laughs> shot right there, man. That's a great one. Instead of taking a knee and going in, you know, down 11, they end up going down 18, Kirk. And the bad news for Texas fans came at the beginning of the second half. Lisa Salters got the word that it was going to have to be the young freshman the rest of the way. Colt McCoy will not return to this game. So I asked Mac, how does your game plan change with the true freshman in under center? And he said, look, we just got to find something that he's able to do, simplify, so that we're able to get something out of our offense. 
They did by finding Jordan Shipley in the third quarter. While Texas' defense was smothering Bama, Ty didn't have a single first down of the third quarter. Finally, Shipley, his first touchdown catch in a bowl. I think this is a turning point for young Garrett Gilbert. I think he had some confidence after this. The offensive line does a good job of giving him time. That was the most important thing. The blitz, he had just enough time here to be able to get the ball over top of McLean, and he gets a one-on-one -on -one matchup with Shipley on the man that he needed. I think everything changed for, for Garrett right there. He all of a sudden felt it. And then look what happened. This is a fumble on an onside kick. What Texas has the ball. They got momentum. But Bama's defense would rise up and stiffen here. But it changes the field position. Just by catching this break, even though they don't come up with a first down, they're able to push Alabama, who's very conservative at this point in the game, uh, to get the defense back on the field and get the ball back. Ken Williams not able to come up with a catch on third and 11. I think Alabama at the time felt that if they just kept running the football, they would win the game. They, they couldn't feel any kind of firepower out of Texas. I think they felt they had it. So, up by 11, the very reliable Tiffin for 52 can't quite get it. But could they get the Heisman Trophy winner going in the fourth quarter? What a Shipley, great move by Shipley. It's a bust and a touchdown. Well, yeah. it, it's, it's man coverage with Robbie Green. They brought another blitz, and this is risk-reward type of defense. Upshaw gets there late, but one-on-one -on -one Green against yeah. Shipley, and he finds him again for the touchdown. Both touchdown pass was against the pressure, and they yep. found the guy, and Shipley came through. <laughs> Craig Davis gets a hug. Yeah, They're finding ways with a young quarterback. McCoy tried to be a leader. And this is two-point conversion. Buckner does make the tough catch over the middle, and suddenly it's a three-point game inside of six and a half minutes to play. And but Ingram would come back in the game. They worked the cramps out, and they worked him. But the, the momentum clearly favoring Texas, but Ingram comes back and takes over along with the offensive line, really getting big push up front and giving him some space to run. Yeah, but but third and eight, Muschamp's defense would get a stop, Pete. Yeah. They would get the ball back here. McElroy pressured. Never looked comfortable all night, did he, out there? Yeah. He had a tough night. He really didn't do the, the kinds of things that you'd like to see him do, but he did enough to win the football game. No sacks allowed by Texas all night oh, until the play. Texas native Eric Anders comes off the edge, forces the fumble, Upshaw recovers it. Crucial. Yeah, uh, what a big play. God, I, that was I'd like to apologize yeah. because I just bragged the play before <laughs> about how Texas' offensive line, the much maligned offensive line, hadn't given up a sack, and of course Dang. the next play sack. And then Ingram able to muscle the ball one more yard after contact to go with 1,002 that he had this season. He impressed you, Pete. Yeah, this is this is a great exclamation point he puts on. Being the Heisman guy, showing it in a big situation, the drama of coming back in the fourth quarter to finish it, that was really cool. Yeah, that run very symbolic of his season. With the Gatorade bath. Look out, Bob out. Save. Excellent execution <laughs> yeah. by the time there. Yeah, a little physical. Yeah, I'm telling you, 32 and number one better look out. Now, those that, guys are in trouble. That this came in a little hard. <laughs> they, they, they had a little bit of oomph in that thing. They, they may not play a whole lot next year. <laughs> <laughs> Mac Brown, Texas wondering what might have been had Colt McCoy been able to go. A nice embrace for the Heisman Trophy winner, Mark Ingram, in the second national title for Saban. Now at two different schools, they do it despite converting just two of 12 third downs and completing just six passes. McElroy just 58 yards, but notice two 100-yard running backs, Ingram and Richardson. So Saban comments after winning his second national championship. I'm so happy for our entire team. You know, our fans who have been great ever since we've been in Alabama, the players, uh, the great job that they've done in buying in to do what we need to do, our coaching staff and everybody in the organization. And that's why this team is good. It's not just because of me. Uh, I'm proud of the team and I'm proud of the way they played today. And I'm really proud of the state of Alabama and our folks that uh, this means a lot to. We had our eyes set on it since the beginning of the year and just to do with the whole team is a truly a team effort. And, uh, I'm just so proud of everybody because we worked hard for it. I thought Greg did a good job of managing the game today, got us in the right place. We had two guys that rushed for over 100 yards, and that and the turnovers were probably the difference in the game. You know, McElroy says kind of an ego blow to be called a game manager, but that's what he was tonight in the great tradition of Alabama quarterbacks in championship games. Jay Barker, when the Tide beat Miami back in 92, he threw two picks, completed only four passes, and Stedman Sheely back in 79 when they had that goal line stand against Penn State. Barry Krause made the big stop. He was just four of seven. McElroy had to be elated about the championship, but a little bit disappointed in his performance on the big stage. Colt McCoy obviously devastated, but Classy as always afterwards. Colt, what was it like for you to watch this game, your your last game in a long home uniform from the sideline? <laughs> uh, I, uh, I, I love
love this game. I have a passion for this game. I've done everything I can to contribute to my team. And we made it this far, and, and it's unfortunate I didn't get to play. I, you know, I, I would have given, I, I'd have given everything I had to be out there with my team. We're definitely, you know, concerned when Colt went out, and, uh, and but I think, you know, the good thing is that Coach Davis um, has spent so much time preparing Garrett that uh, that he came in and and, uh, and you know obviously uh, started a little bit slow, but um, you know I, I can't imagine what it was like for him to to be thrown in there in the national championship game. You know, here's a guy on the sideline standing there, cold as could be, and all of a sudden in the national championship game, you say, okay, son, you got it. Uh, so I can't even imagine. And I think it's a credit to him, it's a credit to the kids around him and, and Coach Davis for uh, putting him in a position where he came back and, and actually had a chance to win the game.